Let's learn about function tables. Here I have an example of a function table. With the function table, you'll notice up here, above the table itself, we have our rule. We have an equation, y equals x plus 2. And this is the rule for the function table. This is the equation that has to hold true for this function table. And so for each of these values here below, this equation has to hold true. And then so as we go through this, it'll begin to make a little bit more sense. For this first line of our function table, for this first line of our function table, this is saying that x equals 3. Okay, x equals 3. When x equals 3, what is that value of y? So what we do is we go back to our original equation of y equals x plus 2. And anytime we see a x, we replace it with a 3. So y equals 3 plus 2. And I accidentally wrote a time sign. <coughs> plus 2. And so 3 plus 2 is 5. So y equals 5. When x is 2, y equals 5. 3 plus 2 equaling 5. When x is 4, 4 plus 2, y would equal 6. And if x was 5, y would equal, right, 7. You'll notice, since we chose 3, 4, and 5 here, that I had chosen 3, 4, and 5, we came up with a pattern of y of 5, 6, and 7. Now again, each of these values of that function table and this, each of these lines has to hold true for that rule. x equals 5, 5 plus 2 does equal 7. So this here is a function table. Here I have set up another function table. m minus 2 equals d. This is our rule for the function table. Our rule for the function table has two variables, m and d. And that's why we made this function table here with m and d. Now these values of m, 2, 5, and 6 were given to us. And then so what we have to do is we have to solve for d here for each of these values. When m is 2, we put 2 in here for m, and we solve that 2 minus 2 equaling d. And so 2 minus 2 equals 0. So d equals 0 when m is 2. When m is 5, we are solving that original equation again. We plug 5 in for the m to solve 5 minus 2 equaling d. 5 minus 2 is 3 equaling d. So d is 3. And for 6, if we do that same thing again, 6 minus 2 equaling d. 6 minus 2 is 4 which equals d. So 6 and 4 go together for those values, for those variables. Again, if we looked at that last line, 6 minus 2, does it equal 4? Yes. All right, it's time for you to try. If you see this instruction right here, it says to complete the function table. So what I would like you to do is to go ahead and copy down this function table and to solve for each of those values. Do be careful with that last one there. That is saying that r equals 11. r equals 11. And don't accidentally put the 11 in for the p because this is saying r equals 11. So you have to complete the function table by filling in each of those spaces there. Please go ahead and do so. Hit pause. I've shown my work in blue there for that first problem. It's not really a problem, but it's the first line of our function table. When p is 2, 2 plus 7, r does equal 9. I've shown my work now for p equaling 3, r equals 3 plus 7, r equals 10, 
and I'll write my value in there in that function table. For that last one, let's review that together. We'll put it in red. R equals p plus 7. Remember, most common mistake is for students to try to put the 11 in for the p, and that's not the case. What we want to do is we want to put that 11 in for the r. So we write over here 11 equaling p plus 7, because that's what we're missing here in our function table, that value of p. If we were to solve 11 equaling p plus 7, we could subtract 7 from both sides. That's one way to solve it. 11 minus 7 is 4, 4 equaling p. And at that point, I know that 4 equals p, so I'll go ahead and write that in right there. You'll notice that there is a pattern here. 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, and 11. And it just happened that there was a pattern because of the values that I had chosen for p and that last value I chose for you for r. You were given those values and you had to figure out the variables what p and r equaled in each of those cases. So you completed that function table for yourself. And that's a function table. Here's a final look at a function table. We have 3y plus 2 equaling s. And we were given this function table right here with values for y and a value for s. And we're asked to complete that function table. So again, each of these lines of the function table stands for a different thing. This first line stands for what? When y is 4, what's s? So anytime we see a 4, we replace it with I'm sorry, anytime we see a y, we replace it with a 4. 3 what 4? 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2, which is 14. So I've shown some of my work there. For that next one there, it's saying y equals 7. 3 what 7? 3 times 7. I'll show a little bit more work this time. 3 times 7 plus, at, plus 2 equaling s. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 2 is 23, so 23 equals s. Yep, that's what this stands for. We were solving for s, 23. Finally, for our final line there of our function table, 32. 32 again, does it go here? Hope you're saying no. Does it go here? Yes, because we're solving for that value of y. I'll write that out for you. And so we have 3y plus 2 equaling 32. Subtract 2 from both sides to clear that plus 2. 3y equals 30. y equals 3 times some number equals 30. y equals 10. So 10 is our value there. If we look at that last line again, 3 times 10, yeah, that's 30. Plus 2 is equal to 32. Each of these hold true for this equation, which is our what of the function table? Right, this is our function rule. That's our function rule of our function table. In some cases, you might be asked to extend the function table, and what that means is that you find another value that will hold true. So, for instance, if I chose, and I can choose anything I want, if I chose the value of 3 for y, I would be extending this function table by having not only a value of y, but also a value of s. 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2, which is 11. And that's function tables for you.